Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is Adam Kaplan, the host of AC Radio, and I've got a very special guest with me, a returning guest, in fact, Shaquille, the Jamaican juggernaut Finn. How we doing, baby? I'm good, brother. Nice to see you again. Uh, we just saw each other like last week, so nice to see you again, man. Yes, sir. Got a, got a new setup, new studio, so uh, we'll call it a glow up. And, uh, you know, <laughs> you're back in the saddle, back in the ring. Uh, just fought at the Bell Sports Complex in Brassard, where the Habs actually practice. And I thought that that was a pretty cool venue and a good change versus the casino. What did you think? It was it was cool. It was hot as hell, though, man. It was humid. It felt like it felt like Donnybrook. Like it was really, really hot. Um, yeah, it was cool, though. I was uh, it was a very cool atmosphere. I like to switch up the change in, uh, in in venues too. Like that's always cool. Like even when I was walking out, it was kind of cool to have like everybody kind of like super close. So that was pretty sweet. Bro, you were like a WWE wrestler that night. It was uh, it was a different vibe, that's for sure. I definitely love the fact that it was in a new venue as well. Uh, and you know, Br- Broussard, you're pretty uh, you're pretty familiar with that place. So it was good to be fighting even more in your own backyard versus the casino. I do agree with you in terms of the temperature there. Thought maybe it was going to be in one of the hockey rinks, but it seemed to be in like an indoor soccer stadium. That's what I thought as well. Okay. And what I was wondering is right off the bat, um, do you still hold the titles that you were holding prior to COVID? No. uh, I basically, well, they stripped me because I wasn't defending them because Fights were still happening, uh, like for the NABF and title and the IBF intercontinental title. They were still happening during COVID. Like guys were still fighting the States or guys were still fighting uh, it, wherever they were fighting, just not in Canada. So like I got stripped of those titles. So I'm no longer the, 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 the North American champion. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. Now, is there a champion now? I have no idea. I have no idea who's a super middleweight NABF champion right now. I'm not, I'm not sure. Could, I'm not sure, actually. I have no idea. Now, coming off of that layoff, is this something that is uh, on your scope, or are you just really looking forward to just staying active, taking the fights as they come, and then when the big ones uh, come your way, you'll be ready for them? Um, honestly, like right now, it's, it's really just all about getting back into the groove, right? So... I want to get back to where I was pre-COVID, which is basically ranked in like the top 20. Um, so that's going to come. I said by next year, I'm ready for like all the big dogs. If I can, if I can get like two more good fights like I had uh, last week, uh, like good, good tune-up fights, good, good opponents who are tough will give me rounds. I'll definitely get my, get my wits back, uh, get back sharp, letting my hands go a little bit more. And um, yeah, so I can get back to where I was. Well, that's for sure. Now, what would be your overall assessment of your opponent? And uh, what would you say also was the assessment of your performance? Because I think that if if folks look on box rec and they see Lucio's record, perhaps they wouldn't think that it was somebody who belonged in there with you. But little do people know the losses that he does have on his record are against top caliber fighters such as yourself. And also, I do believe that Lucio was a part of one of or two of Canelo's camps. So, you know, for those that don't know, why don't you educate them a little bit on your opponent and then, you know, let's assess your performance, which for after a layoff, I thought was a great fight, a great performance. You will obviously never be satisfied until that world championship is around your waist. But uh, why don't you talk to me a little bit more about those things? Uh, Yeah, like you said, like you lose his record. He doesn't have the best record on paper, but like if you look at who he's fought, and who he's lost to, and who he's actually stood against and not gotten stopped. He's fought against some really credible guys. And like, like, uh, like you said, like he was a training partner for Canelo uh, a couple times. And uh, so he's been in there with really, really top quality guys. I bet you if like he was a guy who was managed better in Mexico, or if they took him on to be a, like a top guy, he definitely could have had a way better record than he has right now. So when we were looking for guys to come back against, we had a couple different names, and his name popped up. And the master said this guy. And then my coach is like very hesitant because like he doesn't have the best looking record, but we know he's tough. So, and he's like, we want to, if we're going to fight him, we want eight rounds because he, he can go six and it's going to be hard to stop him in six. I can definitely, I feel like I definitely could have got him in eight, but uh, they could only give us six rounds because they had an amount of rounds they could put on the show or whatever. So a certain amount of rounds. So we ended up taking six. I said, I'll take what I can get. 
anyway, uh, so we, t- we took, we had another guy who was like 13 and four, but like, I think he had been stopped in like all his four fights from Mexico. So I didn't want a guy who was going to get stopped easily. I want a guy who was going to be there so I can get my rounds in. Cause the best thing for me is to get in there and do what happened on Saturdays. It was to go the distance and get a good, good, get, get a good feel for it was to be back in the ring. It's been almost three years that I haven't fought. So um, I'm happy that we chose him. Obviously his record doesn't show, but he gave me the chance to kind of like, okay, to feel the punches, to get some rounds in. And, and, and it was, and, and he was a good test for sure. Uh, and I'd like to have more type of guys like him going forward, but obviously the probably guys who would like, the only thing about him in the ring, I thought he was going to fight back a little bit more. Um, he didn't let, he didn't give me the opportunity to kind of showcase what I've been working on a little bit in the gym coming back uh, because he was kind of just like, you know, there in the ring, but either like, punch a little one or two and then grab, you know? So yes. it kind of like threw me off just a little bit, but uh, it's boxing. These things happen. You don't never know what, what kind of guy you're going to get. Um, I thought he would have been a little bit more active, but uh, so it kind of forced me to be a little bit less like uh, active myself too. But uh, like I said, it's a learning experience. It's my first fight back. So um, yeah, it was, it was a, like, it was, like I said, I, I'm, I'm hard on myself. I told myself, I gave myself uh, like a six and a half on 10. Like, uh, I thought I could have did, I thought I could have did a little bit more. I watched it a couple of times. I was like, could have did, I could have been a little bit more active. Um, it was a little bit gun shy with some of my punches. Could have used my jab a little bit more. Cause when I use it, it was popping his head back. Could have set things up a little bit better. Uh, and just like we have to work on when we get back into the gym is work on getting clinched. And when I get clinched, try to stay small, work on the insides and, and, uh, little step backs and stuff like that. But overall, I'm, 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 I'm happy with it, but I know I could have did a little bit better for sure. Well, you definitely are making my job easy because uh, that that was a beautiful assessment because I agree with it on all fronts. I mean, you could definitely see in that sixth round uh, that aggression was starting to show with you and you were looking to see if you could put him away. But there also seemed to be a bit of a disappointment in knowing that you didn't have those extra two rounds to work. And I think the crowd felt the same way because it was obvious if the fight was going to go seven or eight. Uh, that you would have turned up the heat a little bit more. Again, you know, you are a fantastic fighter on the inside. Guys do not like to go forehead and forehead with you. And uh, you could see that if that overhand right wasn't landing on you, he was quick to definitely give you a little bit of a Montreal hug. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that that seemed to obviously slow down the work rate on your end. But at the same time, I thought it was a great opponent, a tough guy, a durable guy. Uh, I appreciate the fact that you didn't want to go in there with a guy who's been stopped three or four times because after the layoff that you had, it wouldn't be satisfying or really much beneficial to your career to just finish a guy in one or two. I actually Mm -hmm. think that putting those uh, minutes in or that mileage rather on your body and your mind in there uh, definitely, you know, was the move. I I definitely credit that. I credit your coach Ian as well, Um, you know, but... What I'm wondering is now is that what is the next process of picking your next opponent? I know that perhaps you don't really like to get involved in that so much, but you are coached not only by a former world champion, but also a guy that has his ear to the ground lower than anybody I know, especially in Montreal. I mean, Coach Ian has hookups on fucking Mars at this point. It is unbelievable. So I'm wondering what what what's next for Big Shaq because uh, – you know, uh, I know that you've gotten in there and done some rounds with Jay Leon Love in Las Vegas. I know that you've been in there with some world champions. And I know for a fact that uh, Patrice Volney and yourself, you guys put on some pay-per-view sparring matches. So uh, what do you think is next for you guys? Um, so, like I said, what's, what, uh, what, what ideal for me uh, is, like I said, uh, another step up in an opponent. So, like, another, not a guy like my last opponent, but a step up uh still a guy who's gonna be there obviously who can who wants to come in to beat me obviously um and uh another guy who can give me some some good work you know like um like uh shit any any who would i say like maybe a guy who's fought um who's beaten a couple guys here who's upset a couple guys and but like I, there's a guy um what's his name a guy who fought against i think he fought against lafreniere i think it was his last fight actually and he lost against this guy. He's a Mexican guy. And he actually knocked out uh, Butler uh, uh, in Mexico. So that guy would be a nice, a good, a good, a good fight for me because he's beat guys here. 
but I think I would be able to take him out, you know, like, or I heard, I heard Lafrenia actually wants to fight. That was the word on the street. So uh, I'm letting you know this. This is what I was told by uh, the New Era Promotions guys. Uh, they were telling me that they're trying to set up a fight between me and uh, Francis. So uh, Francis, if you do get to hear this podcast, I would love to share the ring with you, my friend. It's been, we've, we've sparred numerous times, over hundreds of rounds for sure dating back to my amateur days and when I turned professional. Uh, so if it's something that you want to do your, your first fight back out of retirement, I would, uh, I would love to be the guy to, um, <laughs> to, 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 to fight you, man. It would be great. They'd say, uh, they, I would love to fight for a title. It'd be good. 168. I'm here. So I, I heard you're a little heavy right now, but, um, but I'm, uh, I'm down to fight, man. So if they say I heard Francis in September, that's what's the new, that was things I was hearing that he wanted to fight me. So uh, if he wants to do that, I would take that fight in a heartbeat. Sheesh. <laughs> Dropping bombs, baby. I like to hear that. I like to hear that. Shaq gets it, ladies and gentlemen. He gets it. He understands that not only is it about the opponent, but sometimes it has to do with a little bit of a storyline and a little bit of a history behind it. I definitely love that matchup. It's a name. Uh, Lafreniere is, is, you know, a, uh, a Quebec legend in the boxing game, you know, that is a fantastic call out. There's really nothing else I have to say about that. I uh, will definitely make sure that I clip that and uh, post that on Instagram in the most respectful way possible. Uh, you know, at AC Radio, we're not really looking here to set up any beefs or anything like that. But in any way, shape or form, if we can help set up a uh, monumental fight in the Montreal fight game, you best believe I, uh, I want to be a part of that. So, you know, you definitely seem like you're laying the roadmap down. I love that. Um, I wanted to segue a little bit, obviously. Now, being a personal trainer, you know, running the boxing program at Blackout Fitness, uh, you know, now instead of maybe being more hands-on with potential amateur boxers, amateur boxers, and then the everyday client at Donnybrook, now you're focusing more on just the everyday folks, and I mean that respectfully, um, at, at Blackout Fitness. Now, what I'm wondering is, is that, you know, leading up to your fights when you were coaching and training people at Donnybrook versus now at Blackout, uh, you know, how was it handling maybe perhaps some of the questionings, uh, some of the gassing up that these folks were providing you on the way while you were trying to zero in? Because I saw you on an interview on, uh, I believe it was Thoughts of a Pugilist, and I thought it was a fantastic job. I really liked the layout and, and all of that. But uh, you could start to see that smiling, nice guy Shaq was zeroing in on his prey. And uh, some of those answers were short and concise and right to the point. So uh, what's Shaq like, you know, two, three, one week out from a fight when he's at uh, Blackout Fitness in Griffintown and he's got to kind of, you know, keep a professional, but at the same time, let him know that, you know, it's hunting season. Yeah. I mean, uh, so the difference between the two, I'd say, because Donnie Brick obviously is like a boxing gym, I'm a boxing gym, the straight boxing gym. There's like professionals, there's amateurs, and obviously there's the everyday people, but they're really into boxing. You know, blackout is the total opposite. It's a pretty much like recreational boxing. People don't really know much. I'm kind of like teaching them everything as they go. And it's like, you know, more fun, you know, like, um, uh, so the questions that I get there are not the question I get at Donnybrook. Donnybrook, obviously people know exactly what they're talking about when they ask me questions. I black out not so much because they didn't even really know me for boxing. They knew me just because I came in and as a, as a coach. So when everybody found out I actually boxed for real, like, oh my God, you boxed for real? Wow, that's crazy. So yeah, I was like, oh shit. All right, cool. This is different, you know? So, um, so when I was telling them about my fight, they didn't understand what goes into it so when they had saw me cutting weight or whatever it is or they say oh how did you lose so much weight did this happen da, 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 and all this some kind of stuff i was really kind of just like taking my time you know like i'm like i wasn't you know not being an asshole or nothing like that just answering questions how i could and and then i told him like i can't really explain to you now because i'm kind of like close to the fight but i'll explain more when i have more um energy to do that you know <laughs> so uh but so you know it's it's, it's great it's i i love it there it uh kind of gets my mind more um folk i feel like I, I could focus a little bit more on getting ready for my fights and stuff and i have my energies more directed towards that because with donnie brig i felt it was more owning something and have to worry about this that 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 and that 
and teaching and training and doing all this stuff. I felt it was just like a lot on top of a lot, a lot of stuff on top of the other. So it kind of took away from my, um, my mental for, uh, for boxing, you know? So I feel like now where I'm at right now, it feels good. I still train at Donnie Brook. Obviously you can see that you can meet me there and I'm with Ian and, uh, everything is great right now. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, that was definitely a professional way of answering. When I have enough energy, I will give you a more detailed answer. You know, I won't say what the AKA to that means, but uh, at the same time, I mean, you know, so going into a gym like Donnybrook and, and teaching, you know, people that do know what they're talking about, do study film, uh, do kind of interact and participate in the boxing communities versus being at Blackout, um, would you say that some, uh, what would you say is like the biggest difference in, in teaching those different sectors of, uh, people? Because, you know, one thing that I've realized as a trainer myself is that everyone wants to get good at boxing, but no one wants to study film and no one wants to even do the minimum of shadow boxing yet. They want to know how they can improve. <laughs> now at Donnybrook, you know, you could obviously give them, you know, the cold hard truth, which we spoke about on the unanimous decision where, yes. You as uh, Coach Shaq aren't afraid to tell somebody, boxing isn't for you, pal. Uh, maybe join intramural soccer or play tennis with your girl, but uh, boxing's not for you. Now, obviously, you don't have sparring or is it registered as a competition gym, but uh, how do you navigate the waters of having to give someone the cold, hard truth? Uh, I mean, so obviously, like, it was way easier in Donnybrook to tell somebody. And I think it's like Donnybrook, there is, there's obviously more people who are in there to actually compete. Right. So guys who want to aspire to be young amateurs or even some amateurs who want to be pro or even kind of people just jumping to the gym and actually saying like right off the bat, like, how do I, how do I, how do I turn pro or how do I do this or whatever? Not even know a, a lick of boxing, but they're there for boxing, you know? And um, so it was kind of easy to tell people, like if I seen them once or twice, maybe this isn't for you. Or if I saw them sparring, okay, this is probably not for you, you know, but you can definitely train and learn how to, to, to do it. And who knows, maybe it will happen. But right now I don't think it's the best thing, you know, and at Donnybrook, there's not, there's maybe like one or two people out of like everybody who have trained at there in his classes who say anything about, Oh, I, I would love to, to maybe f compete. It looked really cool watching you, Da, 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 this and that but nobody's really even trying to hit anybody in there so it's kind of it makes my job easier in that sense so i don't have to tell anybody oh well no you probably you probably shouldn't be thinking about doing that because most people there are really just there for the workout which is easier for me but obviously the love for boxing is 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 deeper in donny river because people are really 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 about boxing here it's more i'm i'm, I'm giving them uh i want i like i definitely want to be like a closest to a boxing gym as it could be, but you know, I know it's mostly not that. So I'm taking what I can get with the people and the people are honestly are all the clients are great. They, uh, they, they, they're, they, they're learning as we go. And I, I can see the progress, the progress throughout every, every month. I see something different. Somebody's learning something new. Somebody's keep, people are asking questions, which I like, cause I like when people ask me questions about how to do this, how to do that. That means they're interested in it. Right. So that makes me feel good about that. And then seeing them basically use what I basically showed them on the bag or whatever, doing drills with their partners is kind of cool too, you know? So it, there's a, there's, 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 there, it, it, there's a plus in, in, in both uh, Donnybrook and Blackout in terms of like the clientele. Yeah. And, and uh, just to circle back, you did state Donnybrook while you were making that second point, but Shaq was indeed talking about Blackout. So Ian, if you're listening to this, don't get upset with Shaq. He did mean Blackout. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, one thing that I did want to ask you is, you know, we spoke about it two years ago, how boxing was more or less becoming the newest drip. And, you know, it seems as if right now is definitely saucy, especially with guys like Jake Paul coming on the scene, which are bringing in the casual fans and et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm not yeah. even asking you about Big Jake. What I'm actually going to ask you about is how do you feel when a client comes up to you or when you're scrolling on your phone in the morning and you're watching some of these um boxing drills and and techniques and and you know exercises best to build up your boxing game on social media uh versus the actual reality that you have faced since you've gotten into the game because 
you know, I could maybe perhaps answer this already for you, but a lot of it on there is absolute bullshit and doesn't <laughs> actually correlate to what would happen in a sparring match or let alone even a partner drill. So let's not even talk about a fight. But, you know, what's your view on on the presence of boxing on social media, um, how fitness coaches have also tried to try their hand in the game of boxing? Because my biggest thing is that boxing is a sport. It is not a form of fitness. So sometimes when you see these people, uh, when you see the everyday person wanting to learn how to box, uh, they don't understand that it's the same thing as if Shaq was like, hey, I'm going to teach you how to be a running back. You know what I'm saying? So I was just wondering what your views were on that, because I think that people uh, don't really, you know, I think they understand that sport does burn calories, yeah. but boxing is not meant uh, as a, you know, necessarily a means to fitness. It's, yes. it's a sport. Yeah. I, I honestly, I couldn't agree more with what you're saying right now, bro. It's, uh, <laughs> um, you know what it is, man. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like when I think back at like through the pandemic, it's like all type of people in who knew a little bit about fitness became like some type of trainer or fitness guru or whatever it is. I think I, I blame the pandemic for that, man. Like it's uh, like everybody knows everything about somebody became a nutritionist. Somebody became a fitness coach. Somebody did online this, somebody did online that. And um, now it just pretty much exploded now where we're seeing like, I don't know most of the people who are doing the boxing stuff. So I, I'll see it on my feed. Cause like, you know, I look up boxing stuff all the time. So it's just boxing training and pe people who I don't even know who they are. I'd never seen them in the boxing world before. And they're showing somebody how to throw a jab or showing some type of technique with a partner. But I'm like, and I look at the technique or whatever it is that I'm like, this would never work in a fight. You know, like, I'm like, what happened to um, the fundamentals of just like, okay, you repeat this. Like when I learned how to box, I have to repeat a jab like fucking a thousand times, you know, like or I'm repeating something that's boring. It's not freaking flashy. It's not, this is not that. It's like, it's a, it's, you know, like just like in any other sport, like the tennis, like these guys are, so you're swinging your racket over and over and over at a, at a ball, like, but you're repeating, repeating the motion over and over again. That's what boxing is. I'm repeating my left hook over to just trying to perfect it, making sure my chin is underneath my shoulder, like making sure my hand is turned over, like little things like that. But then we're not showing that they're showing all this flashy stuff. Oh, this guy's blindfolded doing pads. This guy's blindfolded slipping, you know, <laughs> the, the, uh, like the, the bag and stuff or, um, different stuff man like i i don't know man it, it's 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 annoying it's definitely bringing attention to the sport but it's more it's for me to watch that as like a real boxer it, it, it definitely gets annoying you know and um anyways it, I, yeah i don't really know what to say man it's just more of like uh it, it does it definitely gets annoying and it takes away from the from the uh the realness of the sport i think well, you know, I agree with you on all factors. Once again, we're in the same boat. I mean, I've never claimed to be a fighter. I've gotten in the ring a few times, but at the same time, the average person does not want to do the boring things, doesn't want to do the tedious things, doesn't want to have to drill their jab a million and one times to make sure that it actually cracks the bridge of someone's nose or chin. Um, you know, and they just want to go in there and have fun. And we understand that. But on the flip side, on the days where you're having a bad day, when coach keeps it real, you have to absorb that, you have to respect it, and then you have to do something about it. So, you know, I, I definitely appreciate that answer. There is a lot of noise on there, but, uh, you know, we could only or you could only focus on uh, what philosophies and what technicalities you could bring to the game. Now, one thing I wanted to ask you. My bad. And, uh, and, and I think my bad. Uh, and, and it's mostly for now, all the social media, it's for likes and views, right? So, they're doing all, it's pretty much that's what it is right that's all it's about like we, they don't really care about what it looks like if somebody's popular showing this okay it's gonna get whatever likes and views it gets you know so that's it's all about now it's all about likes and views as i always like to say sad but part of the game um one thing i did want to ask you though shack is uh the same night that you fought uh david lemieux got in there with uh david benavidez and Ooh. i was just wondering you know I don't really think I need to ask you how you thought that went pretty self-explanatory. But what I did want to ask you is in training camp or, you know, in your off season, which partially, which is pretty non-existent in the boxing game, but when you are not fighting, 
who are the guys that you like to watch? Are you a boxing historian? Do you like to watch the likes of Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, uh, Joe Lewis? Or do you like to watch more of the recent guys? Do you even watch your coach, Ian? Who do you fuck with in the boxing game that you really like to study and watch? Uh, you know, and you could either name guys that you actually feel could help a part of your game or strictly just guys that you're a fan of or, or women, of course. Um, I mean, so, well, shout out to David Lemire, though. Like that, honestly, uh, like he's a, like I, I really, I love David to death, man. Like we've been through camps. I think I've told you we've been, I've been in several camps with David. Obviously not this one, but uh Golovkin, uh, all these different camps we were I was in with him with and um and they, he showed honestly like he, they would have had to kill him to get him out of there like he he was definitely outgunned like we saw from round one he definitely went in there tried his best uh but uh like uh David um uh Benavidez is just he's the monster right now he's definitely at 168 I mean other than Canelo he probably the best guy 168 you know like he's a super super tough guy very extremely skilled extremely strong very powerful uh have nothing but i have nothing bad to say about lemure he 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 did he he fought like a warrior you know he you know he went out it was three rounds but he like the coach stopped the fight he definitely wouldn't have went out like that he sure for sure wants to go out in the shield but you know he has a a, a son now uh, and he has a family obviously and a newborn kid so I, I I respect what his coach did in stopping the fight. I would I would I would appreciate if if that was me and he ended up for me too. You know, just like you know, like we didn't want you don't want to see guys go out like that. You know, so um, and he was outgunned. You didn't see any way of him coming out of there. Uh, you know, like that. Uh, so, but back to your question. Um, yeah, I mean, I I like to watch guys. I I definitely in the past when I first started boxing, I was a big. I like to watch like Evander Holyfield. I like to watch Tyson um uh some of the old heavyweight fights like obviously muhammad and george foreman and joe frazier and a lot of those guys too i like to watch um uh julian hawk i like to watch his knockouts he has some great 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 knockouts um uh but I, a lot of rec a lot of the i'm watching more of a lot of recent guys like obviously canelo i love to watch canelo's um like the way he developed going after especially after the mayweather fight how his style kind of changed because of mayweather you know like he's became better defensively and you know his offense has obviously always been good but defensively he's very sound Bivol kind of did what he did because Bivol is I think he I think Canelo took him very lightly uh, I think the team's team took him lightly because Bivol is a is he was a great amateur uh and has extremely good skills um I like to watch Golovkin uh Golovkin has a great style me because I pressuring cutting off the ring I like to watch that kind of stuff better be I've obviously just same thing like pressure fighters, what they do uh, to break guys down, how they go to the body, how they cut off the ring, stuff that I use in my own game, you know, like, um, so yeah, I definitely love to watch boxing. Anytime there's a boxing event on, I try to watch even like the, 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 the guys who are not really known. I like to watch those fights as well to see who's up and coming. Um, and obviously the ladies as well. I just watched uh, the, probably the, one of the best female fights I've ever seen in my life, which was, um, uh, Amanda versus uh versus Katie Taylor that that fight was insane um Katie won me a thousand bucks so that was cool <laughs> um I'm never I'm never a betting man but I I said to myself there was a two to she was a two to one underdog so I said I have to bet I thought Katie was gonna dominate but Amanda definitely surprised me she when she heard Katie I was like yelling at my tv I was like holy shit I can't believe this is happening right now but Katie Taylor proved that she's definitely one of the um, the best female fighters to ever live. Um, but Amanda's, it was a very close fight. I I gave it to Kaylee, Katie, but uh, in a rematch, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It would, it would uh, Amanda has some serious power. She can crack, man. Big time. I mean, uh, Shaq almost had to let his newborn son Zaire, he, had, he almost had to tell him to get a job after <laughs> that close loss. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Thank God for that. Lil Z, man, already having to go and hit the, uh, go and punch that card in. But luckily, uh, luckily for that, not the case. Uh, uh, just quickly, congratulations to you and your wife on the birth of your son. I appreciate uh, it. Just a fantastic thing. And uh, what a better way to help zero in yourself on your career and, and fight for a bigger purpose. Um, 100%. You know, uh, one thing, you know, 
You did mention how Benavidez and Canelo were at the top of the food chain. Do you not think that Caleb Plant and Benavidez would be a close fight, or do you think that it's uh, there's quite a bigger gap than we think? You know what, Ke- Caleb, man, Caleb, like I wasn't trying to shit on Caleb at all. Caleb, Caleb's a guy that I would love to go in there with just to see how I fare with a guy like him. Because those are the type of styles I definitely have trouble with. Like I know this, like I have trouble guys with faster hands and who kind of move, you know? I don't have trouble with guys who are like, who want to come and fight. That's my, I love that, you know? Um, but Caleb would definitely be a, a great, great fight for myself in the future for sure. But him and Benavidez, that's, that'd be a, an amazing fight. I would honestly love to see how Caleb fares against a, a Benavidez. Cause Benavidez for me is at the top of the food chain. For me, like it's Canelo, Benavidez, and I think everybody else, <laughs> everybody else. There's obviously the top guys like Caleb, Charlo, Charlo still needs to fight somebody though at 168. Um, but the other Charlo, the one who just won, the, he's he's the better Charlo, I think, because yes, he actually one. fights people. Yeah, the one that moved to 168, he still for me has to fight somebody. You know, like you know, he's calling guys out, but he's not really fighting nobody. So, yeah. I like this new Shaq, ladies and gentlemen. We got him calling out Francis Lafreniere, talking shit to the Charlo brother. Not, uh, not, not the, not the heavier one, but the lighter one. Uh, you know, keeping it real on the social media stuff. Shaq, I want to thank you for coming on AC Radio. You're a legend on this podcast. Uh, you've always been so respectful to me. Always, you know, giving me a moment of your time. I appreciate you. Congratulations on the birth of your son, and I'm so happy to see you back in the ring. Looking forward to more, and uh, I wish you all the best. And I cannot wait until September. You best believe I'm going to be clipping yeah. that soundbite, and you. Uh, you know, we're going to get the Jamaican juggernaut back in the bread game, baby. Let's go, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Shaq.